Welcome back to Karate 360. I'm Kalen Angloss. I'm Richard Mosdell. And welcome to Karate 360, guys. This is episode 31. We're going to break down all the newest uh, tournaments that have gone on around the world. There's lots to discuss and lots to get into, so let's just dive right into the show. Awesome. My hits with the song? Karate 360, let's start this show. You will kick high and I will sweep low. From local to global, it's the thing that we love. Karate! San Rokumaru. We're just getting more heart behind that That's right. Song. That's right. I, I, wasn't that. gonna, I wasn't going to do the full like craziness that Kevin Smith does when the other guy sings. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't, but, need uh, that, don't need that distraction. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, absolutely. I love that song, man. Oh, it's kicking in for sure. That's I like right. it. I like it. And we uh, think we can add maybe some music to that even a little bit. <laughs> We got it. We got it figured out. <laughs> Hopefully you guys have noticed that we did get a new intro uh, song as well. So we kind of added onto that. We wanted to bring some liveliness. Podcast download. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we wanted to bring a little bit of liveliness to uh, to our intro. So here we go. Episode 31 of Karate 360. Just flying away. Sanju Ichi. There you go. Every time. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. 31. Yeah, yeah. It's incredible. First of all, how was your Easter weekend? Easter weekend was relaxing. Yeah, uh, as it should with be. the kids. Uh, the neighbors invited the kids out to do... Um, Hunting for Easter eggs. Ah, great. And they ran the past. They got a whole bunch of them, and then some of them were at, like just above their eye level, and they kept running by them outside uh. like, that same tree <laughs> over and over. And, and over you're just again. like, just go, oh, yeah, whatever. It's like, go. all right, you guys passed it again. They're like, no, we didn't. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so. Yeah, it was relaxing. Do that sort of stuff. That's Yourself? good. That's good. Yes, relaxing. Same thing. Family time. You know, it's uh, it was it was good. Went back home, hung out, uh, did a lot of family stuff. Went for walks, and we did the Easter egg too with my little sister and uh, one of my nephews as well. To get all kind of the Easter thing. Same thing. You know, they got way too much chocolate. I ate probably too much <laughs> chocolate. <laughs> thing, just indulged. Yes. Uh, but no, it was really good. Really good just to hang out and, and chill out for a few days, and right then on. get right back to it. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's like everything's just bursting. Like yeah, it's just going. Everything's just popping. Just so much happening yeah. right now. Um, I mean, with the Canada Open coming up, there's people like emailing me from all over the world, going, "I need an invite. I need an invite. Like, pay the fees. Sign I'll send up. An invite. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sign up. Register. I don't so need an invite. People are sending me messages in my Facebook feed. Yeah. Right. Um, that's fine. They, no, have that's to, good. they have to be educated in what, what's happening. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. For me, uh, you know, next week I defend my <gasps> thesis. Holy cow, that's right. So I present my thesis on the karate athlete fitness test and all the work that we've done. So basically two years of hard work uh, and all the work that we both put in. Um, I get to, to present it and, and defend it in front of the panel. And that's... Uh, you did the heavy lifting. I did, but none of it would have happened without you. No so problem. there it is. Wait, is it open? Can people go to it? Uh, it is. I believe so. I'd have to double check that but i think it is open it's next wednesday uh what time 10 a.m okay. 10 a.m and it was kind of funny today i had a little bit of a scare actually so uh i had two people from the university text me today and said hey man are, are you okay and I said, yeah i'm fine they said oh well we heard one of the professors at the university said you had a, a, an, a an emergency and i said i I don't think so. Like, yeah, I don't think yes. I had an emergency. Yeah. So I sent this professor an email and I said, you know, is there an emergency that I that I don't know about? Like, is yes. something going on? She said, oh, well, it's just showing right now that you don't have any credits for your for your degree. I was like, well, what? That's funny. <laughs> that's what I thought. And I guess what happened was my supervisor f slipped her mind, forgot to submit my credits before she decided to go on vacation for a week yeah, and a half. Interesting. So they didn't know I was graduating. And I thought something was up because this morning a message came out for all the people that are kind of finishing their degrees and defending, and my name wasn't on the list. So I emailed them. I was like, hey, you forgot somebody. Like, yes, I also yes. do it. And then I had those text messages come in, like ta asking about this emergency. So my supervisor just forgot to submit my credits, and I was kind of worried for, for about a couple hours. I was like, yes. oh, man, if this messes with anything, I, I'm going to be upset. But they said, no, it should be okay. Um, I know she gets back from vacation tonight. I'm meeting her tomorrow, so good, she's good. just going to sign off on this. And I said, I told the, uh, the, the professor that I was talking to, I said, why don't you send me all the documents? I'll print them off, <laughs> and I can just take them to her and say, sign here. Totally, <laughs> so totally. a little bit of a scare, but it's still going to happen. So man, that's almost like typical ivory tower, oh, forgetful totally, professor. Yep, totally. The academic world sometimes is just in its own world. 
Um, and, it's, and I know for sure that I reminded her before she left. Yes. But that's okay. Yes. I know they have lots going on, and they and they have lots to deal with. And you know, I'm just another another student of theirs. So you're, you're just gonna be really polite about it until you get through the PhD program, and you walk out. And that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Not saying anything because they're Jeez. gonna accept me. Yeah, for sure. So that's the that's been my day today. But up until now, it's just been just been uh, preparing and practicing practicing my presentation over and over right again on. and getting ready for any kind of questions they have but at this point nobody knows the project better than me so that's awesome yeah so it's good yeah that's gonna be amazing yeah you get to stand up there and, and defend it and hear what their comments are and yeah for sure no it's gonna be good I remember going to many defenses before I did do mine in Japan and just listen to like different panels of professors and yeah. sometimes they would be very pointed mm. and sometimes they would Pontificate about their own life. Yeah. <laughs> and then they go, oh, and by the way, I read your thing. And yeah, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully that's happened. Well, hopefully. I'll take that. Yeah. That's hilarious, man. Yeah, so it was good. And then, of course, just uh, here in the club, everything's just still firing away. We are busy. We are bouncing. Um, and, yeah, the whole world is... Yeah, just going crazy. Yeah, yeah. So. And, and of course, as we know, and we'll talk about it in a little bit, a lot of international tournaments happened in the last, well, just this past weekend, actually. Um, but yeah, a lot of a lot of things happening. A lot of the karate superstars, so to speak, uh, uh, training at the biggest stage or, or competing at the biggest stage, and and people are just watching. I think every you know K one tournament that's gone on so far, they've said that the viewers have been higher and higher. The the wow. streaming devices, the WKF streaming is catching on. People are starting to watch that. And that makes sense. Goes up and up and up. So it's good to know that. Uh, I mean. It's obvious. We we knew that more eyes were coming to karate, but now we can see it, right? We can actually track it. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And I think if, at some point the ha it has to get to be like, a, and maybe they have it already. Like, it's got to be like a four-hour show. Yeah, for sure. Right. Yeah. I know in Japan and I think World Championships have done this a few times, but like they need to get it down to like a four-hour show. It's like watching a long football game or something. Yeah. Right. And then yeah. people can like, all right, I'm gonna commit. I'm gonna watch the finals. I'm gonna see how this goes. For sure. You know what model I really like? I know. You're not much of a sport. You don't watch a lot of sports outside of some of the martial arts. But uh, golf, I think, has a really good aspect because golf obviously isn't. Golf's on TV. Golf is on TV, <laughs> believe it or not. There are <laughs> professional players, and it's on TV quite often. And the way they do it is, you know, all the golfers are playing their, their yep. holes and all that thing, whatever they do. And um, they just jump around from person to person, from hole to hole, and they say, okay, here's Tiger Woods. He's now trying for this putt, yes. this one. And then they go to the next person, then they go to the next one. I think karate could use something like that where they go, okay, Agiav's up now. Here's one, here's his Got match. It. Oh, now we're going to jump over to this match. This is a kata match. Here's this. Yes. And just jumping and then have somebody commentating through. I mean, they do have the commentators, but they're only doing it for the... Uh, it's almost like an Olympics. It's almost like an Olympics, right? yeah. Because there's so many divisions and they have to bounce around to like different events. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But some people you know, want to see different athletes. So I think it's good to kind of jump around, give you a little bit of this one, a little bit of that one, a little bit of this one. Yes, yes. And even in that dead time in between the matches, well, now you can jump to a different match and you can watch that. So there's always some kind of action happening because mm -hmm. it's the same when you're at a karate tournament, right? You're watching this mat, then you're going to watch that mat. Oh, now that person's up over there. Yes, so yes. I think what they need to do with the streaming device is really make it like you're there, right? And the quality is obviously good of the video. So I just like that model. So well, I, I think eventually it would be great if they dropped the pay feed yeah. and just put all the cameras on. For sure. Right? Yeah. And then just do raw so you can watch it yeah. and then be able to, to, to follow along. Just think when they get to the point where it's virtual reality and we just put contact lenses on. Just pop just them in. And yeah, and we're just and like, wow, we're, we're there. We're like there. It's here. Looking around. Yeah. Scary, but it's coming. I noticed that the Commonwealth Karate Championships are coming up, which is a, it's not – Technically, I think in the WKF, they use WKF rules right. and all sorts of stuff goes. So yeah. There is some sort of tie there. Yeah. But it's open to anybody. Oh, yeah, really? So it's like an open tournament? Yeah. Wow. So anybody from you know any country that's related to the Commonwealth, obviously in the States, you guys can't go because you, know, you had a war. Um, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> independence. Yeah. Wrote constitutions, that sort of thing. That's right. Yeah. But the other countries that are in the, <laughs> that are technically in the Commonwealth, uh, they can go to South Africa and they can compete. Yeah, no, that's cool. I think that's really cool. Yeah, so anybody who wants to, I think it's going to be the middle of September. Okay, great. So anybody wants to go to South Africa. I heard when it, they held the Commonwealth uh, Karate Championships in Canada a while ago, 54 athletes came from South Africa. To oh, very cool. Yeah. Very cool. And you were just telling me before, too, that for the Canada Open, or I guess we just discussed that, didn't mm -hmm. we? You had people coming, co uh, contacting you from we all have over the place. four or five countries. There's a team from Azerbaijan coming. Nice. They've paid. Agaev? Maybe. Maybe. I didn't see his name. Uh, no, it's their B team maybe, but 
it's part of the national team. Wow, great. So it's going to be a tough competition. Yeah, that's so cool. Um, yeah, all different categories and weights and stuff. Um, yeah, so there's, di there's different opportunities. So let's get into what's that. been going on. Let's go into a little bit of karate yes. global news. Yeah, let's do it. All right. So we're just pulling up the results right now. All right, so two big tournaments that happened uh, over the past week. And uh, we had the K1 in Rabat that was up, and then also the U.S. Open happened at the same time. So we're going to break down all of that. But before we do, one thing that we need to highlight is the return of Rafael Agaev. Who is and, yeah, and just before we do that, let's sure. just classify what the K1 is only elite athletes. Mm, yes. You need permission from your country to go. Yeah. Um, you may, in Canada and in the States, meet be on the national team to go. Okay. Might not just be allowed to go. Yeah. Um, but the U.S. Open, anybody can go, and it's from like little kids all the way to elite. As you can see, when we right. were going through the results, we won't right. go through all of them. No, no, we'll just um, do the elite results. Yeah, we'll yeah. just do the elite results. But, but you could look at even the five, six-year-old division exactly. and look at their results as well. Yeah. So keep going. Yep, because yeah, because yeah. So the Rabat had somebody come back that hasn't competed for a few tournaments, and then the U.S. Open had someone famous come back who hasn't competed for like a decade. That's right. So right. in Rabat. Uh, it was Rafael Gaev who hasn't competed since Man. the World Championships yep. when he won the gold medal for the fifth time. Uh, and then, yeah, so he missed all the K-1 tournaments coming up to this one, but he came back to Rabat and did his thing. Got the gold. Got the gold medal. So uh, just awesome to see a guy back in it. And, you know, it's interesting to see what tournaments these elite athletes pick to go to at the K-1 level because, you know, you would think that mo I think most of the uh, elite athletes went to like Paris. Paris is always a, a popular one. Um, so it's interesting to see which ones they pick and choose. I know Damien Quintero, the Kata athlete, I think he went to all f all of them. There's been four K1 so far, and I'm pretty sure he went to all of them. Um, so it's just interesting to see the kind of which ones they choose to go to and, and kind of uh, how that works out for them. Yep. Could be the strength. Was it the um, strength of the pool, depth of the pool? Sure, yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a term for that. Strength of the competition, depth of competition. Yeah, yeah. Right? There's the Arnold Schwarzenegger thing is you only go to the ones where you're going to make a big impact. Sure. Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and obviously he's at the, you know, as they say, even President Espino says he's a legend. Yeah. So oh, he absolutely is. Yeah. Yep. So he's operating at a really different level. Um, so we've got the match. We've one of the matches. One of the matches. Yeah. That we're going to put up. And we're going to comment to you as it happens. Yes, that's right. So uh, this is a match that we found on YouTube of Rafael Agaev. This is not the gold medal match, uh, but it is one of the preliminary matches that he had. It was Rafael Agaev uh, versus Ermin Eltimer from Turkey, who actually placed as well. Um, so this is in the preliminary third? rounds. He placed third. Okay. Yep. So we will post this in the Karate 360. Uh, well, this broadcast, actually, we'll be posting this right now. So if you're watching right now on Facebook Live, thank you for tuning in. And there is the link for you guys. If not, remember, for everybody else, that these podcasts do come out on, uh, well, sorry, we record them on Thursday night. We record them live, 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and then they come out Monday morning. So be on the lookout for that. All right, so this is the matchup between Rafael Agai from Azerbaijan and the athlete from Turkey. And here we are uh, commentating it. Here we go. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the match. Here we go now. Rafael Agayev is in the Ao, and Ermin Eltimer is Aka. Awesome. And here we go. We're doing a uh, time and a half. Time and a half. And they're bouncing. They're bouncing. Agaev comes in first. Ooh, nice little bit. He pointed at the ground there in classic yeah. Agaev style. <laughs> style. Exactly. Yeah. Going for the head. Yeah. And now they're going again. They're taking the control of the center of the ring. Oh, and a double uh, uh, punch there. Looked like maybe a little bit of contact. Nothing there. Looks like Agaev took it nicely on the chin. Yeah, yeah. But they didn't give him the point. No point. They didn't even call Yame. Pushing him back into the far corner, back in the far corner, push. He's always trying to get that first, obviously going for Senchu here, but he's yes. really trying to land that first technique. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. he pushed back and he got the uh, yeah. the one point there and he got Senchu. Oh, we got to talk about the change in Senchu here. Which after. we'll talk about in a sec. Now the other athlete, the tricky other, pushing up in the corner, exactly where Agiev wants him. He's doing his dancing back and forth. And he's waiting, waiting, trying to draw out something here in the corner. Still waiting. And then he goes in for a Kazemizuki, and he scored. It looks, looks like he's like got he one flag. We can't see the other flag just based off the camera angle. Agiev gets the point. Yes, he does. 2-0 two two. right now for Agiev with two minutes left in the match. The other athlete now going on the aggression, coming at him, slowly inching in, inching I in. Think the, I think um, 
Irmon here doesn't really know what he's going to do. No, I think he's just pressuring, pressuring, pressuring. And Agaev just slowly backing up into the corner. Ermin pushes him out. And Tangled. Agiev, they tangled Agiev, half try to take down, and they called Yame. Oh, it's going to get a category two for holding on Agiev. Mm. That's Chikok. A minute and 44 left. The Turkish athlete takes a set in the ring, again pushing Agiev back, and Agiev yeah, goes down a nice That's like the third Kazuki. or fourth time he's gone over his guard I into think, his chin. Yeah, I think all three of these points now. So it's yeah. three nothing Agiev, all points coming over top. Both fighters left handed, too, uh, going from the southpaw stance. Yep. And the Turkey athlete tried to throw a kick there. Agiev looked like he just stumbled a little bit. There's always a there's always a point in an Agiev match where he falls on the floor. Yes, right. Like <laughs> he's hit in the head, falls on the floor. Yeah. Wonders about his life. Gets back <laughs> up. Goes. Okay, I'm gonna get back into this. Yep. And they're doing it again. There's about a minute and twenty left. They're just holding court here again. The Turkey athlete doesn't like you said. Doesn't really look like he knows exactly what he wants to do with Agiev. Uh, mm -hmm. He is the aggressor though. This is where Agiev is going to just frustrate the rest of the match. Yeah. He's up three points. He's going to frustrate. And he's one of the best at this, just kind of staying outside of distance when he wants to get in. He really jams the athlete. Mm -hmm. But now they're just kind of, you know, medium distance, bouncing, bouncing Agiev, staying there. See, I don't think the other athlete knows what to do. He's mm -hmm. just going to, I think he, what he's trying to do is just burst. See yeah. how he's just trying to burst forward? But yeah. he's, can't, he's been caught three times in the same thing without changing a sense of where he's at. Agiev just moving around the ring. You know, he's really comfortable in the corner, Agiev. Mm -hmm. eh? He does no problem putting himself in the corner and, and getting the other athlete to come at him. Oh, it's just frustrating time. Yes. 30 seconds left here in the match. Still 3 nothing. Agiev. They've called Yame. And they go back to the line. And Hajime again. 30 seconds left. Again, same thing. Agiev backing up into the corner. And the other athlete, you know, Ernest? trying to enter with a kick. Yeah, and he's trying to just do... He's, he's got the same plan, just trying to... Burst in, but he's not quite uh, able to extend. What I think he should be doing is frustrating, I guess. Yeah, or trying to draw something out. You yeah, know, he's yeah. not. He's just trying to, to burst in. You know, take that leg, take the arm. Yeah, kind of a yep. half hearted kick there. He fell over. They called the MA. 13 seconds left in the match now. 3 0 Agiev. Oh, it's going to get a. Looks like he needed a Joe guy. Yeah. No, it's, there was, he, didn't, he didn't have a. Oh, Antonko Chewy. Must be in the end. Ten seconds left. Oh, yeah, of course, because it's the last 15 seconds. Last yeah. 15 seconds now, not 10 yeah. seconds. Man, you got to be up on the rules. That's you got to be right. up on the rules. But I give his down again. Say. That's the second time he's down <laughs> and wondered about his life. Yeah. Still three, oh, six seconds left. Tried to jam oh, a punch. Three seconds left. Now they call Yame. It's going to be over. It's going to be over, yeah. Hajime, last three seconds. The tricky shot. He tries to go in, doesn't really do much. Agiev keeps him away, and they call Yame. And that is the end of the match. Rafael Agayev winning 3 0. Uh, he got the Hansel Kachui at the end, but not really important. And now, that could have been even more exciting than the finals. <laughs> yeah, for <laughs> sure. Usually, about finals are one nothing, 2 nothing if yes. you're lucky. So. so what do we know about I give match? A lot of times, 30% of it, 33% of it is he's going to score and get two or three, four points up. Yes. Then he's going to just run the clock. Yep. And at the end, he's going to frustrate. Just frustrate. And if he's in trouble, he's going to come back fighting. Yes, and he comes aggressive and he comes gets aggressive. hungry for the point. You know, if you think about it, like at any moment you can get injured. So if you are in there really hard getting your points and you twist a knee or you take too much of a hard hit and you win, you go to the next round, you've got to be fresh for the next round as much as you can. For sure. So if you know you're going to win. Now, what is the um, uh, coach Antonio? Es no, coach um, Seba. Seba yep. Olivia Seba says, like, you know, if you're better, win in the first 30 seconds. Yes. In this case, he... He kind of won it on points in the th first 30 seconds, but didn't go take it all the way to 8 0. No, I think, and, you know, by the looks of that match, he probably could have and, if he and, wanted and to. And it's probably a lot more talented than he's leading on. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. Now let's talk a real quickly about the new century rule because we saw there uh, uh, Rafael Agaev scored the first point. They called the MA. Yep. They gave the point to Rafael Agaev and they turned to the table and they said, I guess he was, ow, century. I've never liked that. No. I've never liked turning the, turning because. Like, why do you check? You've, ne you've never liked it. I've never liked the turnaround <laughs> thing. Because when would you turn around and go, "Okay, you just scored the first point, or you scored a point"? Yeah. Did you get that? Yeah. So you go, <laughs> and then did you get that? Like yeah, I yeah. don't understand. Like you have to look back and check that you've got um, the right the score right penalty. The right penalty. There's a penalty yeah. there. Yeah. I understand it's a new system, so they want to make sure that the the volunteers are knowing sure, and stuff sure, like that. Sure. But I just always thought that was kind of weird that they would turn around and go, make you it know, very clear. <laughs> it's Sent you. Yeah. Sent you, know, you on that side. On that just side. in case you're wondering, it was that person right there. Got exactly. Sent you. So the new rule. 
So the new rule is don't turn around. <laughs> don't turn around. <laughs> don't turn around. Just send you. You have sent you. Go. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah you just you go point. It sent you. Like you give them the point. You say sent you. Yeah. Say sent you, and then boom, you're on your way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that makes that makes much more sense, uh, for sure. So and actually, I I can find that, but like I just always thought it was goofy how people would they'd actually like rotate their body all the way around. Sure, the referee. Yeah, yeah. Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna read it out, so everybody who's uh, driving in their car can understand. So this is the new century rule. This is the new century rule. Same right. but well, different. Well, same same century rule. It's a gesture. Yeah, same but different. So like before, the referee will first give the point and then announce Senshu. While announcing Senshu, the referee will not turn towards Kansa. Will That's not. the referee sit, sitting at the, the arbitrator sitting at the desk. Okay. But continues to watch the contestant. After Senshu is announced, the referee will restart the match accordingly. And... So the referee goes, you know, Aka Yuko, right? Um, or, you know, Al Wazari, whatever, you know, whatever the point is. Yeah. And then say, Aka Senshu, and put their palm towards their face, or go, Al Senshu. Actually, I'm doing it backwards here in the video, but that's fine. So that's it. I like that idea. It's faster, you know? Yeah, yeah, for and sure. And it's not so silly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I just thought that was funny. Like, I'm looking at you. Did you get it? Yeah. So. There it is. So kind of a little modification of that. And yeah, so that's the Rafael Gaev match that we found. Uh, we will post that on the Karate 360 Facebook page. You guys can watch it there and we go from there. Even though he, he won with only 3-0, there's so much information in that video, like mm, how sure. fast he scored off the yeah. line, how he skipped over, how he took punches, how he came back. How he controlled the fight. Controlled the fight. Yeah. How he frustrated, yeah. how they moved around, how to use his legs, how he pointed at the mat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like there's, sometimes there's just so much information in one that you can, you have lots of things that you can do with the kids. For sure. And train with kids. Like yeah. I can just see from that one video, I was like two or three drills I can make for them to have some fun with. Awesome. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right. Well, let's just dive into the rest of the results from the Rabat's uh, tournament, the K1 that happened there last weekend. For and sure. Again, we'll just do our usual start from the top. We'll all Sounds name good. the division. You name the uh, athletes. Or why don't we do it the other way around? You name the divisions since we're almost sure. kind of made here. And I will name the athletes. And again, we're just going to do the gold medalists from each category. Yeah, because no one else matters. Nobody <laughs> else matters. If you're not first, you're last, right? That's right. That's, That's right. right. That's right. <laughs> Uh, but we, we appreciate your participation. That's right. All right, here we go. Let's start from the top. So, again, this is the K1 league, uh, Premier League in Rabat on April 14th, 15th. Hi. Female kata. Uh, Viviana Bataro from Italy. Female kumite minus 50 kilos. Uh, Radwa Sayad, Egypt. Female kumite minus 55 kilos. Uh, and again, just a little disclaimer, if the names are pronounced wrong, that is our it's apology. It's his fault. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and next time, Richard's going to read the names. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. All right, so minus 55 kilograms is Aya uh, Shaban from Egypt. By the way, ne when it's my turn, I'm just going to read out whatever the athlete number is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, female, Kamite, minus 61 kilos. Uh, Naj Najle Karchali from Morocco. Female, Kamite, minus 68 kilograms. Is Sylvia Semera uh, Semerero from Italy. Okay. Next one is female comité 68 plus kilos. Is Dominika Tetorova from Slovakia. Next is female team kata. And it was the Morocco team that took gold in female team kata. Great. Male kata. The winner was Mohamed Alhani from Morocco. Actually, Morocco oh. got first, second, and third. Wow, in male they kata. just cleaned up. Yeah, they sure did. Um, male comité minus 60 kilos. Is Malik Salama from Egypt. Okay. Um, Male Kumite minus 67 kilos. We have Ali El Sawi from Egypt. Male Kumite minus 75 kilos. Who else but Rafael Agayev from Azerbaijan? I've heard of him. Yeah, I've heard of him. I think we've seen a couple of videos on him. Yep. Male Kumite minus 84 kilos. Is Akhan Mamayev from Azerbaijan. Okay. Male huh? Kumite, what? Go for it. Go ahead. Okay. Male Kumite 84 plus kilos. Ahmed Alasfar from Egypt. Right on. Male team kata is Morocco. The Morocco team lots of teams. winning. Lots of teams for sure. Yeah, yeah. In the in the team kata, five team passes. What I was gonna say is uh, Araga. I don't I don't know if I've seen him in the K ones at all so far this year. He might have been at Paris, but other than that, I think uh, Ruta Araga has has kind of Ruta Araga has been blasted, but Ruta Araga is in different weight division too. That, that that's true, but I don't I don't even think I've seen him in 
in any of the K1s. I, I could be wrong. We'd have to go back and check. Let's go back. Maybe yeah. Paris, but I can't remember. Yeah, yeah. So anyways, that's your results from the K1 in Rabat this past weekend. As we also know, there was also another tournament that happened this weekend, the U.S. Open. That's right. The biggest tournament in North America. That's and right. Chile Canada Open takes that claim. That's right. <laughs> hey, there are friends. There are friends. That's right. Yep. But, you know, we can still take over. Um, so, yeah. So we have... The results as well. And again, we're just going to read the elite results from the U.S. Open because no one else know, matters. nobody else matters. <laughs> and again, we're just going to do the gold medals because nobody else matters. Oh, you guys all matter. We just, you know, you don't want to be here for five hours listening That's right. to results. That's right. Um, so let's go through the U.S. Open results. We're going to start just by the way they've laid it up. We're going to start with all the Kumite first, and then we'll jump to the two Kata divisions. So again, this is the results from the U.S. Open. This time I will read the division. Okay. And you can read the uh, athlete. So starting with male. Elite Kumite, minus 60 kilograms. Douglas Bros from Brazil. Douglas Bros winning another gold medal. Uh, male Kumite, minus 67. Guillermo Ramirez from Colombia. And minus 75 kilograms Kumite. Thomas Scott Tom from Scott, the United States. Captain America. Mm -hmm. Minus 84 kilograms. Jorge Averdo. Acevedo. See? It's not as easy as it looks. Hey, I believe, I believe that's a Jorge. <laughs> Jorge? Jorge. Jorge. I think that's Jorge. Thank you very much. From? Chile. Chile. And that was in the minus 84. In the plus 84. Carlos. Ooh, that's a have fun on that one. Ben Irigoven. Carlos. Carlos. Carlos got first place. <laughs> Carlos from Mexico. Hey, Carlos. <laughs> Good job. Yep. Uh, female, minus 50 kilograms. Sh Shannon Nishi. Shannon Nishi gets Nishi the from gold. From United States. From the, gets the gold medal. In the minus 55 kilograms. All right. This is uh, Stella Urango Martinez yep. from Colombia. Yep. Uh, minus 61 kilograms. This is. Ooh, man, this one's even tougher. <laughs> Zuhanashi Guido Caballera Santiago Very from well. Mexico. Very good. That was the minus 61. This one, the minus uh, 68. Alyssa Fonseca from the United States. So do you want to talk about her right now or do you want to talk about her after? We gotta talk about her now. Okay, let's go for it. Uh, well, let's finish it. Let's All right, let's finish it. And then we'll talk it. about yeah, it. Yeah, because everyone's just on pins and needles. For sure. Wait, next one. What is the plus 68 <laughs> kilograms? Come on, man. <laughs> just waiting. All right, plus 68 kilograms is... I'm just going to say Anna. Anna. Yeah. Anna Mendoza Lizaranga from Mexico. And the open, uh, male open... Back to Douglas Bros from Brazil. Douglas Bros cleaning up at the U.S. Open. And in the female open, Valera Escher Marmolio. Hope I got that right. From Ecuador. I think you had a tougher, uh, you've got a tougher draw than me for the, uh, for the names. That's Kumite. Yeah. And then let's just uh, go on real quick here to the Kata, the elite Kata females. The Kata kind of females is Navarra. Oh, no, pardon me, nope. pardon me. This is the males. Uh, male. Kata. Oh, okay. Damien Quintero from Spain. So Quintero winning another gold medal. And the female elite Kata champion. Sandra Sanchez from Spain. So there it is. Those Spain are Bain. the U.S. Open uh, results. A couple things that came up there for me. First of all, I want to highlight a couple Canadian athletes that sure. were at the U.S. Open. We know also the American athletes obviously doing very well on their mm -hmm. home soil. Tom Scott, the Captain America winning that, and he looked really good. A couple Canadian athletes. Daniel Gaisinski still um, just showing that he just keeps getting better and yep. better and better. From the national championship championships we had in Quebec City in February to the uh, K1 that they had in Morocco he where he got placed in and now this one here uh, Daniel Gaisinski winning third place in the open Kumite mm -hmm. and then also in the in his own division uh, he got a I believe a bronze medal as well yes mm -hmm. he did he got a third place in the plus 84 kilogram as well so Daniel Gaisinski really cementing himself as a force for the Canadian team right now exactly yeah. exactly getting in some good experience for sure and other Canadian athletes that kind of shine in there, and female uh, American athletes. Shannon Nishi won in the minus 50 kilogram Kumite athletes of the United States, so she looked really good there. Actually, uh, they did quite good in a lot of the Kumite athletes, but Justine Verk as well from Canada, winning a silver medal in the minus 50 kilograms. She's doing great. I think she had some knee surgery. Yeah, she, she had some time off. She had about a year and a half off, I think, and uh, yeah, now she's just coming back and again she's looking really strong too. And then also finally, uh, Valentina Zolotorova in the minus 55 kilogram. She's also some Somebody who's starting to, to really place at the international level right. in the K1. So she got a third place in the minus 55. Dual athlete. As well. Dual athlete. Uh, she's also 
also a good referee as well. Mm -hmm. You care for Fedrick, good referee. And she could like referee herself while she's competing. She could. <laughs> <laughs> she could. Yeah, I'm gonna go get myself a <laughs> good and next, and then of course the return of the U.S. I guess you can call it the female captain almost or at least used to be. Absolutely. Um, Elisa Fonseca from the United States winning first place in the minus sixty-eight kilogram competition. Yeah, so her main name was Al. This Al. That's yes. when she won. And yeah, she married John Fonseca. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah, really fantastic. Um, Got to know them a little bit as friends from a distance, and uh, saw her saw her compete in her last World Championships in 2008. Cool, yeah, yeah, fiery, like really, really strong. Um, so it's great to see her just burst back onto the scene. She really wants to go to 2020, right? Yeah, yeah. well, you, we were talking about before, and probably you guys have seen the kind of promo video for yeah, this one popping on Facebook. Yeah, maybe we'll put that on the uh, on the Karate 360 page as well. But really, really well done, and just kind of see that she's fired up and ready for 2020. No, it's amazing. Um, and you know, she came out of Hawaii. Yeah, yeah. Right, trained in the same dojo as uh, George Kotaka. Yeah. And I remember George saying when he was here a couple years ago that you know he only needed one person who could be super consistent to tra train with him. Yeah. Right. And he said for him it was Alyssa that if you and I train on the beach or train the dojo, no matter what she was doing in her life because she was heavily involved in school and other activities. Yes, yeah. he would, she was always the person that would train with him. Yeah, that's awesome. And then the two of them went on to you know, win world championships. You know, so they hadn't won. The United States had not won a world championships since a uh, medal since 1980 when Tokyo Hill won it. Whoa, crazy. Right? So from 1982, I think George won 2002 or 2004. Like, like 22 years. Yeah, exactly. Years. Then the two of them collected between the, the both of them was two or three medals each over you know, a uh, three, four, six year period. Yeah, yeah. And so it's been a long, long time for, you know, and then to come out of the same dojo and to come out of Hawaii, which is slightly isolated. Yeah. But, you know, they had a really strong work ethic. Uh, um, it's just fantastic. So, um, and I think actually since they won their gold medals, there might not have been an American who's won a gold medal at Worlds. Oh, okay. Yeah. I could be wrong, guys. Put in, you know, reply to us in the, in the comments. Let there us know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I could be right. So, um, could be wrong. Could be right. I could be wrong. Right. Yeah, no, man, wait. <laughs> <laughs> but you could be wrong. <laughs> All right. Well, there we go. That's the results from the uh, international tournaments, or at least international for us uh, yes. tournaments this past weekend. So there it is. You can check out all those on the Facebook page. Cardi360 will post those as well as the and video that we broke down. There. And we don't have enough time to go. Like, there's been style world championships yeah, that have gone on. Yeah, there was yeah. a Shiteru style world championship that happened in December. There's a couple really big tournaments that happened. Uh, um, we just don't have time. to cover every single one no nope. so make sure you go to i think there's a sport data has a lot of that sort of stuff on it sure there's also a, a website called karate records.com yeah, that's right that's and right. they normally uh collect quite a bit of stuff and have a little point guide as well sure and if you guys out there listening if you have a tournament that you want to help promote ah, let us yeah, know let send us know. a message and we'll uh give a little shout out to you and your tournament and we'll try and draw as much attraction we can because that's what we're all about here in the exactly. Karate 360 podcast if you're in horse live bc let us know you're going to turn that's right there you go <laughs> this is our karate global news of the week all right let's dive into a little bit of technical tactical and i know you got something that you wanted to what our technical tactical of the weekends. Okay, so um, technical tactical relates less to the physical training of technique and more to how you present yourself to the world. Sure. As okay. a karate difference between being a legitimate karate instructor and being an authentic karate mm. instructor. Okay. Now I could be getting really deep semantics. Yes. Right? <laughs> but there's a to me I'm kind of, there's actually a, an important thing here. And so just to help everybody out, let's be um, fun, not just academic, but fun. Let's just go through you know the the dictionary terms for each of them. The definition. So we're yeah. looking at what is the difference between an authentic and a legitimate karate instructor. Right. So first thing I'm gonna think, well, what does legitimate mean? It means conforming to the to a law, um, being able to justify things with logic. Right. Is being genuine. Okay. Right? Um, maybe 
they were done in the traditional original way, in a way that faithfully resembles an original based on facts and basis, it's reliable. So to me, again, it could be splitting hairs, <laughs> but there's one thing in here I think which is really important. When you present who you are and how you've learned something, you have to present how you personally are going to teach something. Yes. That's being authentic. Being legitimate means that you've studied in whatever karate system you feel is legitimate. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that you're going to teach what it was that you went out and learned. Yes. And I think it's important that you, you think is, because it doesn't yes. matter. It's, it's up, you know, we're not splitting hairs here. We're not trying to say this is one style better, this is nope. better than that way. It's whatever you believe. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think this, for me, is really important. And if people walk into your club and the first thing you try to present is how legitimate you are, you might lose them. Yes, for sure. Right? I'm a fifth down in this. I'm a world champion in that. I've done tons and tons of this. I'm really, really legitimate. I've been trained in Japan for three days. Exactly, <laughs> exactly, right? Um, like, well, you know what's really funny, and it's been longer than two weeks, is you know, people go to Japan, they have their two-week trip. Yes. They yeah, yeah. Physically, time-wise, and being in front of some master for a whole trip, in a group of 100 to 200 people or even five people but like 10 hours yeah and the people who live in japan are like 10 hours i, I do 10 hours a week yeah because right? yeah, like, yeah. i teach and i go to tournaments we go drinking i get to hear like you know um wait drinking counts as karate time oh yeah no. let's see in, in japan because <laughs> you'll be drinking you know <laughs> that's my kind of sensei well you know <laughs> momoida sensei he was the head for just like one of the if not the best one of the top three best uh high school karate clubs in japan you would be drinking with him and he would go the reason to use this knuckle this, you go, whack, he hit you, and you go, see, if I hit you this way, but if I hit you this way, it hurts a lot more, right? Yes. Like, oh, I'm learning a lot here. Now that's authentic. That's uh, authentic. Yeah. And, uh, so that's a really good thing. Good that you caught that because when someone walks in and they go, what are you going to teach me? You say, I'm going to teach your child, or I'm going to teach you that I like, I, I present karate like this. Mm, yes. We're going to do this in the class. We're going to do that in the class. You're going to do this in your tra training. You're going to have an authentic, true experience. Not you're going to be as legitimate as me. Yes, yes, I think yes. the first turnoff for me when I'm talking to someone is say, well, I'm the 15th generation of so-and-so. Mm. I go, that's great. That really means something to you. For sure. But how does that match me having an amazing, interesting training on the floor? Um, I was watching a video the other day of someone who really, you know, feels really solid about their world and where they came from. Sure. And yet the way they presented and their authentic way of teaching was so uh, uninspiring. Mm. That's a problem. Right? Mm. So you, you can be as legitimate as you want. There's a, there's a reason there's only three people in your club. Mm. <laughs> yes. Right? So I think that's important that not only in when we're teaching karate, it's also when we're training with karate. But then you can, you know, if everything relates to karate. Um, in life yes for sure right yeah, you yeah. know are you what type of authentic person are you going to be yeah and do you walk around saying i got this degree i, I got Harvard, this right, that, right? right totally totally it's the fastest way to turn somebody off you know i would i would be more interested in someone going listen i'm gonna do this thing like i you know i'm gonna a project i'm gonna you know i'm gonna you know call like you know i as a salesperson i'm gonna call back every customer exactly when they said you were gonna call that doesn't matter if you went to Harvard or not, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. You're just showing your authentic abilities, yes. you know? Uh, a lot about how to have a really authentic experience mm. compared to a, a legitimate experience. Because legitimate... Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like I went, uh, there was a... ...time when I was applying to a PhD program at Harvard and I passed the first round for... Um, uh, cultural anthropology to study. I was going to do continue studying karate um, as a the globalization of karate. That's right. Yeah. At Harvard, so yeah. I passed the first round, and they're like, "All right, so you 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 know you're looking good. Your master's was good. Everything's good. You just have to pass a few more rounds. But seven years, mm -hmm. you're going to make no money. You'll graduate sometime around when you're like 45 or 50." And you'll be able to say you're from Harvard, and then you have to go out and get a job, <laughs> right? I'm like, wow, like that's intense. That does it does it all. matter? Yeah. Like, does it matter? It's Harvard. Totally. Yeah. You know. Um, so I thought like there's like a legitimacy there. Now I was obviously learn you know quite a bit, but I thought I could be just as authentic if I just went out and if it was part of that world. Totally. Yeah. 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 So anyway, something about authenticity and legitimacy. Now obviously, if you're going for a black belt test in your system, you have to 
you know, figure out how it is you pass it. Sure, respect the legitimacy. Yeah, and, exactly. Yeah. Um, and then bring your own authentic approach. Yeah, exactly. And uh, you have a lot more to say on that in a, in a few episodes about how to, the, the shuhari, like, you know, you learn it, you get good at it, and you evolve beyond it. Right. And, you know, in a world where you lock on the things, you go, this is the only way to do it. How dare you even, like, say you can't go beyond it? Um, that in a few episodes, because uh, um, I think there's ways that we can actually pop, make karate pop even further. Awesome. Yeah, so yep. to be continued. Yes. There we go. All right, let's go into now our karate training tip of the week. Hit me. All right. So this week, I want to bring something real simple, real quick, real easy. One technique, one, one, sorry, one, not one technique, one exercise that you can do in the gym or in the dojo uh, that can improve your karate performance for both kata and kumite athletes. Okay. And this is something that has been on my mind for a while now. It's something that I've done on a lot of athletes here, uh, and it's something that I think is important. So... One thing, obviously, punching. I'm looking at punching speed, and we've talked about this before, building the kinetic chain. So yes. the kinetic chain is getting energy from your feet all the way up through your body, into your torso, and into your hands. So we're yep. looking at punching speed now. We know that the speed from a punch comes from turning the torso, right? Turning the torso so nice and fast and firing mm -hmm. your hand out. So one to exercise that you guys can do is called the landmine press. And we've done this before. We've looked at it before. Yep. Um, I gave a good video just the other day. It's on KFIT conditioning if you want to check it out. But the landmine press is probably one of my favorite exercises to do to increase your karate performance because it really teaches you how to you know, channel that energy and use that kinetic energy from your feet all the way up and getting that turn. So basically you're using a barbell, mm -hmm. uh, like a squat bar. You're jamming it into the corner of, of a, of a bench or something, yep. or if you have the landmine, which is just the thing it goes into, that's even better. Tommy Ken's in, we got one. There you go, we got <laughs> one. Yep. Um, in your fighting stance, so you're in your natural fighting stance, you're holding in it kind of just as you would in your reverse hand, and you're really trying to take that energy, dip back leg, pushing hard off your back leg, and turning your torso nice and fast and firing the bar mm -hmm. up as if you were almost punching somebody in the face. Yep. Then you bring it back down, same thing, push off the ground. Turn as fast as you can and fire it up. And you really want to build it up as fast as you can. So you really want to try and get that energy all the way through your body and explode up just as you would if you were punching somebody in the face. And just a progression is you just kind of uh, do it about 10 times on each side, from your right side, from your left side, and then you increase the weight a little bit more. Try and do 10 side mm -hmm. on one side, 10 on the other side. And then you want to get to a point where getting 10 at the 10th one, it's quite challenging. You're almost fatigued on one side. And then you want to go to the other side, of course, and do it. But really trying to focus on full power, fast as you can turning the torso and punching up and I believe that, that will improve your karate performance especially for kumite I think I think there is some aspect there but for kata performance as well oh absolutely yeah. we used to do it, it was one of our we had a lot of routines we used to do with sure with rich and uh, uh, Pete Williams in Japan and we would take a big thick rubber mat like a lift like a lifting mat yeah we would curl it up the wall and so we jam yeah. the base of the bar in yep. and then we get that press and throw it right up no yeah. it's awesome it's a great drill yeah, it's a great drill it's a great drill the all the way through the body power yeah for yeah. sure for sure um, you can put the link you have a video of that right like I do yeah, yeah, put yeah. Link on there? I'll put the link on on the uh, Cardi 360 Facebook page you can check it out I break it down I give a little bit of a couple modifications you can do but it's a great exercise and, and you can tend to do it without like you could do it with a light kettlebell or you could for like sure. the same sort of motion yeah the same sort of motion for sure the thing I like about the landmine press is it really forces forces you to use your whole body. Mm -hmm. Kettlebell, mm -hmm. you can kind of just use your upper body to kind of push it through. But the landmine, you know, you're not going to get that power movement from just moving your arms. You really got to channel that energy from your whole body to kind of push it up. That's so, so cool. That's, uh, there it is, your karate training tip of the week. Real simple, one exercise, prove your karate performance. Good for everybody. Good for everybody. Try it out. So there it is. Sweet. All right, we're getting uh, to the nitty-gritty here of episode 31 of the Karate 360 fan podcast. Questions. We got some fan questions that have come our way, uh, and actually one in particular that we wanted to touch on that was sent to us from uh, somebody that we're both familiar with, Mr. Neil Surrey sent us a message. So thanks, Neil, for uh, tuning in. Oh, pardon me, Neil Coin. Sorry, this is Neil Coin. Pardon me. All right. I'm getting my, my Neils mixed up here. Lots of Neils. Lots of around. Neils, too many. Um, so this is from Neil Coin asking us a really great question. Sure. He's wondering, what's the best way way to improve uh, it says lung distance, but I'm sure lunge? it's lunge different distance. There we go. What's the best way to improve lunge distance in kumite? 
uh, strength training, weighted squats, or similar plyometrics, both will have something different. So what is the best way to improve your lunge distance in Kumite? Good question. What do you got for us over there? Okay, so I'm going to leave you the strength training one. Okay. Lunge distance, I'm thinking about he wants to cover more distance across cover the Cover more distance, I'm assuming probably for a Gakazuki or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, for driving lunging. forward. Yeah. So uh, obviously as he trains, he's going to get better at it. Yes. When you can set tape, we've been setting tape on the floor yeah. and, and getting it up. I'm going to leave you with the answer of actually how to develop the muscles. Okay. But one thing he might be able to do is do a double step. A double step. A double step is like... Pop, pop. And yeah, so instead of going one long lunge with mm. a slide, yeah. you, when you're bouncing forward, you add an extra pop just before it, yes. and it gives you a transfer of momentum to push off. Good, yeah. And actually, um, you need to look up any George Kotaka video in, in YouTube. You'll see that almost a lot of his punches have double step. Yes. Yeah. And I remember him teaching on his, um, and maybe there, there's a trailer for his training videos he made like 10 years ago. And he actually talks about increasing your lunge distance through a double step. Mm. Because what happens is when you're bouncing forward and back and you actually stay a little bit farther away from the opponent, so they think, okay, even if you do one step, one lunge forward, you won't make it because you're too far. But this double step is a spring that adds you totally. to Totally, yeah, yeah. And so he actually demonstrates how to do a double step to increase the lunge distance. Awesome, good. So it's on there if you Google George Kotaka in his training video. Good. Um, good. I'm going to break that down a little bit more scientifically sure. just on that, and then I'm going to offer my own thoughts on that. Yep. So with that double step, we're using this, what's what we call the stretch shortening cycle where mm. you channel the el elastic energy in your ligaments, and then you bounce totally. out of it. So the more efficient that is, the more you're going to be able to go forward. And the best way to train that for the double step is the and, box. Or? Uh, box is good because yep. you really want to get the eccentric, so like the downward phase of a squat or the downward yep. phase of any. So yeah, stepping off a box, not jumping off a box, but stepping holding it and then exploding ah, up and then okay, really okay. trying to get the bounce coming off from the box as well. So you're basically on a box, going floor, jumping on to another box. Really good way to, to kind of work your stretch shortening cycle, but you do want to be careful because it's very taxing on your on your ten, ten ligaments. So oh, I blew an sure. Achilles tendon and stuff like that. Yeah. So. Careful with that. Another exercise that I'm going to throw in there just to work your one leg lunge type stuff because now we're looking at probably pushing from the back leg. Mm -hmm. Real simple technique that you can do in the dojo. We do it here all the time. Basically, you get into your fighting stance, you lift your front leg, and then you just jump across ah, the dojo yeah, on your yeah, back like yeah, hop, yeah. hop, hop, pop, pop, and really try and push, 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 push all the way to one end of the dojo, turn around, do the other side, lift your front leg from your back leg, push yourself all the way across, pop, pop, jump, 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 all the way to the other side. That gets to be too easy, throw, all, well, it's not easy, it's tough, but if you want to challenge yourself even 